Hi, I hope you're doing well and uh, enjoying getting back to a, a little bit of what was normal or maybe our new normal and enjoying the lifting of restrictions. But as we start to move back towards normal, I thought it would be really helpful to just take a little bit of time to reflect on how we've gone through this period of um, a little bit of lockdown and, and some restrictions on our movement and uh, on our usual activities. There's an oft-repeated uh, phrase that those who do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it. Now we often think of that in terms of you know, what countries do, but it's also true of what we do as, as individuals or as families that if we don't think about the patterns of what we have established for ourselves, if we don't think about when we don't do well, then we tend to just go round and round and round in that circle. With the, uh, the link to this uh, reflection, there would have also been a, a, a downloaded sheet and uh, you might like to grab that and uh, have that on hand. I'm just going to talk through some of the issues. I'm not going to pause just as a way of introducing you to the ideas and can I suggest that you spend a little bit of time sometime in your weekend or your week. Just park somewhere in a quiet corner if you've got a quiet corner and uh, think through some of these things. So the first question I want to ask is about you and your relationship with God through this period. And I've got two questions there. First one is, what have you learned about yourself and your relationship with God during this period? Has it brought you closer to God or have other things distracted you away from him? Um, in difficult times, we either tend to run towards God or away from him. What's happened for you during this time? It's been emotionally and mentally a very busy time because we're being out of rhythm. When we get into a rhythm then we we get used to it and it's easy to cope with you know, the little variations. When suddenly we're out of rhythm and things just aren't working how we expect them to, it takes a lot more effort and energy and things start dropping off. And the question for you is, was one of those things your relationship with God? Did other things take priority? Or did the demands of the season actually draw you into God um, and help you start to get your peace and your, I guess, security, your comfort, your sense of purpose grounded in him rather than in other stuff? That's an important question. Um, be realistic. Be brutally honest without being nasty to yourself. Um, none of us are perfect in any of these things. But think of yourself pre um, the COVID changes and where you are now. Are you closer to God? Are you more aware of him? Or have you drifted away? A second question is one that talks ab asks about how have you coped with the loss of the usual patterns? Now, depending on your personality, um, Patterns might be really important to you. Um, for some people, having structure in their day-to-day, -day, in their week-to-week -week is absolutely critical. And when they lose structure, huh, everything falls apart. Um, that's usually true of little kids, but it can be true of us as we get older as well. And as Christians in a church community, we often get used to those patterns of having regular interaction with other Christians, be that home groups or Sunday worship or other activities that we have. And those things get knocked away and that might have really been difficult for us. And suddenly we, we don't feel grounded anymore. We're, mix my metaphors, we're all at sea. So I've asked two questions there. First of all, how have you been able to maintain or not uh, your points of God connection? Did you rely on external sources to keep you connected with God? And once those external sources were gone, did things fall in a hole? Um, how has the loss of the usual patterns made that difficult? Were you able to put in new patterns, new ways of connecting with God? And the second question there is, 
what does it tell you about what you will need to do if at any further future time you experience physical disconnection with other Christians? So if you're a person who relies on pattern, if you're a person who relies on external motivation, you know, other people saying, oi, why weren't you there? If that goes away for a, whatever reasons in the future, what do you need to be able to do in order to keep yourself in a, a pattern of connecting with God that keeps you in a good place, in, a, in good relationship with him? Let's move on to the third one. And this is a difficult one because we're talking about fear. Um, in uh, 2 Timothy, Paul tells Timothy, For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love and self-discipline. Now, what Paul isn't saying here is, oh, well, no, we're, we're brave. We just dash out and do anything without thinking about it. That's not being um, not afraid. That's being stupid. Um, fear is about what is controlling you. What is the thing that drives you? And so the question is, during this past time, during this COVID changes, what has made you feel afraid for yourself or for those you love? What outside of God has pushed you to do certain things? Now, it's often the case that we are more afraid for the people we love than we are for ourselves. We can say, well, if it's happening to me, yeah, well, so be it. I can handle it. But if it's happening to my children or my grandchildren, or my, no, or people I love, a husband or a wife, um, that really, really can grab hold of us and start to control us. So have things outside of God grabbed hold of your heart and your head and your emotions and started to control you during this period? And so the follow-up question there is, did this fear affect your choices and change your attitudes or values? Now, we all feel, oh, what about, what if, what am I going to do kind of questions. But then we allow our connections with God to bring us into the place of quiet and we make, a, hopefully, a God-guided decision. Um, if fear grabs hold of us, though, it starts to change our choices. It pushes us towards things which we where we no longer have any sense of control and where we're not giving control to God but to something else. So it's important just to reflect whether fear took hold of you in any way during this period so that we can instead let the peace of God uh, replace that and our confidence in God be the thing that guides us through what happens to us in life. That leads into the fourth section, which is about decision-making. Now, we have to make lots of decisions every day. The question is, what has had the greatest influence on your decision-making during this period? Was it what the government told you to do? Now, if you're a good Aussie, no, I don't listen to the government. Um, was it what the media reported? Was it all that stuff barreling into your head day and night? Did that determine what you chose? Was it what other people expected? Friends, family, spouse? Or was it how the Holy Spirit directed you? Now, all of those things aren't necessarily mutually exclusive. Just because the, the government says this is what you ought to do or this is what's good for a community doesn't mean, well, God says, well, the government says it, you can't do it. Often, no, God is working in complementary ways through our lives. But the question is, what is controlling our decisions? What has the biggest influence? We need to be listening to God, his ways and his principles first and then allowing him to work through others as well. And the follow-up there is, how or not were you able to allow the Holy Spirit and the Word of God to direct your decision-making in any critical manner? Were you consciously connecting with God and saying, okay, what do I do now? How do I protect my family? How do I show responsibility and respect to others? How do I honour God by the way I relate? to those he's put under my care and he's put within my sphere of influence. How did you make decisions? Did it honour God? Did, it listen, did you listen to God? Were you guided by him? And finally, uh, it's about being prepared. Now, you're probably going to wonder, what in the world is this picture? 
Um, why have I got that as uh, being prepared? Well, I do a little bit of woodwork. And uh, when you make up a project and it's all ready to put together, you put it together in a dry run. You dry clamp everything before you put the glue. You just make sure everything fits together really well. Then you pull it all apart again, put the glue in for the, for the real time and assemble it. I think God in his graciousness through this COVID-19 um, restrictions has really given us a dry run, particularly here in Australia. We've felt it, but we really haven't suffered under it. We've worked with the ideas of restriction. We've worked through what it would mean to deal with a pandemic, but we haven't really been bitten by it, if you like. And so it's important for us not to waste that experience, as we've just reflected. What are the things you have learnt about yourself, your relationship with God, your emotional state, um, your relationships? And how do you need to use that preparation, that understanding for something that may come in the future? Let me encourage you to think these things through so that next time, whatever the cause may be, where there's isolation, where there's a crisis in our community in one form or another, you will actually be able to respond more effectively in a, a more God-honouring way so that you're life-giving to the people around you, not life-taking. Let me pray and I'll leave it to you. Father God, we thank you that you are always with us in life through your Holy Spirit that you're always guiding us by your word. As we reflect on this past period of several months, help us sense how we can grow through it so that we may honour you with our lives in the future. For we ask it in your name. Amen.